See, I'm doing so well already. <laughs> hey everyone, and today I am here with Brenda from God is Grey. I'm so excited to have you on my channel because normally whenever I do content on Christianity or I am interviewing someone who is religious, they are not quite as understanding as you. Yeah, so they have me screaming as well. The radical homosexuals, radical homosexuals, the radical homosexuals. You're cool with gay people, right? Love them. Yay! <laughs> radical homosexuals. So even though we are very different, we're actually pretty similar and we grew up in a similar way and I would say, at least for myself, I was kind of a terrible person <laughs> at moments. Like, I would say things as a religious person, because I was very Christian, I would say things that were so judgmental and hateful. I'm so embarrassed that I feel like you can I have relate. a similar background. Yeah. yeah. So we both kind of came out of that and are doing virtually the same thing online, but from different perspectives. Yeah. Which is really cool. So if you guys want to hear more about our kind of similarities in like breaking away from that and the people we used to be. Mm -hmm. There's a video on her channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description. So make sure to check it out. It'll subscribe. be nice and embarrassing for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just an entire video of us embarrassing ourselves. <laughs> it's fine. We do similar types of videos. Mm -hmm. We talk about Girl Defined. Who are they? Never heard of you them. Paul and Morgan. Mm -hmm. And most recently we have Mrs. Midwest. Yes. So I kind of want to go through and talk about our experiences because we do these commentary videos, we get different reactions, we have different drama with them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting because you are religious and they're more likely to attack you because it's like you're a traitor. But for me, they don't, they don't respond to me. They really go after me because a lot of evangelicals love the black and white of things. Mm -hmm. And my channel is intentionally called God is Gray, mm -hmm. which I say a million times as well. I don't believe that God himself is gray or flaky or changeable, but that we in humanity on planet Earth are contending with gray areas. So my channel is about addressing those gray areas. And... They're difficult and challenging for evangelicals because it's like you just want to pick up the Bible, be like, found it, roll, like, got it down, and then close it and move on with your life. But yeah, it's not no, that easy. There's really no questioning that goes along with that. Right. And if you can't question your own beliefs, no matter what it is, even if it's like your own morals, it doesn't mm -hmm. even have to be related to religion. If you can't question yourself and kind of constantly update and reevaluate who you are, then what are you doing? You know, you're just kind yeah. of blindly following, and it's not a good thing. Yeah, I talked to one atheist too who pointed out, she was like, wouldn't Christians want to be the best at understanding why they believe the things they do and the history of the Bible and why it contradicts each other, like itself mm -hmm. outright sometimes? Like, instead of turning a blind eye, shouldn't you be looking at that mm -hmm. so you can contend with an yeah. atheist? And I was like, that's a really good point. That's what I was actually doing for the first time in my life. Like, five years ago, six years ago, I had just been blindly following and mm -hmm. listening to what I had been told. And then I started asking questions and I like started researching and looking into things so that I could defend my being a Christian. Oh, <laughs> I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. Wow. <laughs> so that's I did it. Of, I'm trying to do it over here. <laughs> yay! But that's kind of interesting because we yeah. both went through similar kind of pathways and then it led to different destinations. Yeah. But we're both like, validating the same beliefs and, and speaking out on the same topics yeah. online. And those are really like social topics and issues of sexuality and mm -hmm. the way we treat each other and the way we move through the world with kindness and love, which mm -hmm. is all Jesus to me, so. I think it's people. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's just like humanity, yeah. right? Like you can choose to be a good person or a bad person. Not that good and bad are like objectively moral things. But you know what I mean. Like, yeah. you can choose to be the best version of you that's possible, and that's kind of what I believe in, kind of as a humanist. Well, I don't believe that you need Jesus to be a good person and to move through the oh, world and good do question. good things. Am I going to hell? <laughs> <laughs> yes! But this is not going to be, like, a debate video. This is going to be, like, a lighthearted video because we have so many things in common, and at the end of the day, Honestly, I don't really care very much if someone believes in God or not. Yeah. I care whether or not they're a loving person to others. Like, are you accepting of other people that are different than you? If the answer is yes, then we good. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what you, that's what you preach online. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so the first channel that we both do commentary on, uh, most recently, was Mrs. Midwest. Yeah. We got very different reactions on that. Yeah. I was a little bit more... <clears throat> 
um, I guess I was trying to break down her arguments and I was more like, I was upset with the things that she was saying. Yeah. And you were a lot more, I guess you were nicer. But you still disagreed. Yeah, there were, basically I just objectively took a look at her channel and all the videos because I saw Jacqueline Glenn's video on it, I saw Mr. Atheist, <laughs> never heard of her either. Don't know. <laughs> and um, I was like, oh, they really have a problem with her, let me dive in and see what's going on. And I saw her as someone that was presenting her personal point of view and being really gracious and saying, hey, if you don't believe this, it's all good move on, you don't have to watch the channel, but then you saw her Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her Twitter and she likes things from the transformed wife who is a literal walking nightmare Love to her. me. Just liking like incel people and just really toxic stuff and then I kind of had to rearrange my view on it. Yeah, you and Mr. Atheist kind of went back and forth on that mm -hmm. one a little bit and I, I was kind of a part of it where he was like both Jacqueline and we in God is Grey, Brenda, they were saying that they think Mrs. Midwest is not as bad as Girl Defined. Right. I still kind of stand by that. I mean, that's okay. I don't know. <laughs> like, I just because, like, yeah, she might have those beliefs, but she's not out there like telling gay people that they're not okay. Yeah, she's never touched on these social things that really bother me, except yeah. for gender stereotyping, and yeah. that was the main problem I had with her. And also, yeah. she just seemed a little asleep on the social issues that come in. She kind of gave me the impression oh. she was like, people think it's nerdy to be a Christian. And I'm like, people don't think it's nerdy. People think we are bigots. People think, we and rightfully so. So I just wanted her to maybe look into that a little deeper. Mm -hmm. And also I, I really hope she looks into her Twitter likes more deeply as well. Because yeah, you that's can't- that's public stuff. Yeah, we Girl, can see. anybody can see that. <laughs> We can see that. That was a channel that we both did some, some videos on, mm -hmm. and then I'd like to talk about Girl Defined. Mm -hmm. Girl Defined. Now, you actually had personal beef with them. Yeah. <laughs> they, like, talked about you at a conference. Yeah, I was really, really sad because I contacted Kristen and Bethany, and usually I get turned down by Christians. I'm like, hey, can we please talk about our differences? I think it would be a really good showing of you know, how we can disagree on things and still maintain our Christianity and have dialogue. And um, they said yes. And I was like, walking around my house all excited. Yay, we'll have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and then I think a month later or something like that, one, someone from my community wrote and was like, they just threw you under the bus at a conference in front of like a thousand teenage girls. And I watched it and I was in the kitchen cooking for my boyfriend, exactly where Mrs. Midwest thinks I should Domestic be. <laughs> Barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. There I you go. literally I was. <laughs> nice. Doing all the right feminine things. And um, I watched their conference video and I was like screaming at my boyfriend. I was like, they just threw me under the bus. I'm so upset. Now this was after they said they would like work with you. Yeah. And they didn't. And the next thing is they're talking about you on a stage. Yeah, they showed a clip of me without tagging me or anything, which I'm like, I understand you didn't want to give me, you know, a, your audience because you're disagreeing with me, but I think it would have been more fair to say, mm -hmm. and this person is God is gray, so that people can make educated so decision for themselves. I, I would never want to withhold information from my audience. I would rather be like, and go look at it for yourself. So then you can yeah. have, form your own opinion on it. So they didn't give me that opportunity with their audience, which was upsetting. That's so frustrating. Yeah. And they said some pretty hurtful things. Like it's mostly Bethany, I think, right? Yeah, I so mean. <laughs> Bethany, basically said that you weren't like a true Christian. It's the no true Scotsman fallacy. They were yeah. like, well, if, because she doesn't believe Christianity the way we do, she's not a real Christian. Yeah. The accusation I get is that I go off my feelings and I only follow my heart on things, which is also hurtful and frustrating to me because I spend so much time researching and looking mm -hmm. into biblical history. I am not a scholar. I'm not a genius, but the basis of my videos is meant to be, it's not just me being like, I think everything's fine and everyone should just have sex with whoever, like, I've <laughs> never said that. I'm like, yeah. here's a, what I believe, here's why I've come to this. I can relate to that a little bit, you know, because you put, what do you say, like 15 years yeah, of I, your life mm -hmm. into figuring out exactly 
who you are and why you believe what you believe. Yeah. And they just kind of discredited that by saying, oh, she's just going off of a whim, off of her feelings. Right, exactly. I get, yeah, I get that sometimes too. They're like, well, you're only an atheist because you were never really a Christian. Oh, I've heard that one before. It's like, yeah. it, give people credit. If they, you know, that's like a big thing in life. You know, even, you know, I know that like I made a bigger jump from where I was to where I am now, but you still had to go through quite a lot of soul searching and yeah. like, looking into things and really questioning mm -hmm. yourself to end up where you are. And let's get so. emotional for a second. Like, as a Christian, it's like, imagine you're in love with someone, if you can't relate to the Christian experience, and people are just outright mm -hmm. accusing you of never having loved someone because you broke up with them, or never having known true love. It would break your heart, because you're like, I know what I experienced, mm -hmm. I know how I feel, I know how much I love Jesus, and how much time and energy I put into my spiritual life, so to just have people say, like, don't listen to her, she's not the real deal, mm -hmm. is very hurtful. I I agree with that. I feel terrible that they have said those things to you, and I, I did watch some of what Bethany said, and it was a lot of that. It was just a lot of invalidating who you are, and, yeah. and why you believe the way that you believe, and um, that you weren't, like, following the Bible the way that, you know, you should be, and there was just a lot of, a lot of insults there. Yeah. I do want to say as a side note, I never meant to send the pack of wolves oh, yes. on Girl Defined, ever. I was very shocked. I'm still quite new to the... The not internet! The, the internet is you crazy. Can, you can beg people to not go after somebody, but if they feel like they like you and they want to defend yeah. you, like, they might. You can't control, yeah. you know, but, and let's just reiterate that. Let's not send hate to anybody we're no, talking about please. right now. I, yeah. I don't even want that. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, yeah. you can't, if it's not on you, if that does Yeah, happen. it was hard to watch, though, so mm -hmm. please not again. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because I don't want them to suffer. I just want people to think more deeply about what they're saying before they say it, especially yeah. if you say in a public space, you know? So in them saying things like you're not following the Bible, I think that a lot of that is referencing, like, Christian beliefs on things like homosexuality because it's, you know, kind of frowned upon in well, the Bible. literally in the Bible, a yes. Little, a little, it's a, <laughs> bit, a bit frowned upon. So you kind of went through this like long journey, 15 years of kind of going through and, and figuring out why these things aren't, I guess, as important to take note of. Or how did you kind of, I'm trying to ask this in a way that's very nice. How do you ignore those passages, basically? Yeah, how, how do you get around that? Fair, fair. Yeah. Um, Christians, evangelicals, have kind of an easy time throwing out the Old Testament because they say, you know, we still love plucking our favorite verses from it and using oh, yeah. those. Um, they call me a cherry picker, a lot of people, for like conveniently like, well, taking what I like. If you're not in the streets stoning people, then you're cherry picking. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know. If we're not all in polygamous marriages with yeah. men that forced us into them when we were yes. 15 years old, yeah, okay. you are not doing a biblical marriage. Yeah, if you have a braid in your hair, if you yeah. wear mixed fabric, mixed fabric, shellfish. shellfish. <laughs> Shame on you for cherry picking. Yeah. So it's like, okay, maybe I'm cherry picking, but we have a long history of cherry picking. I would picking. hope so. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd be in jail. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're dead. <laughs> yeah. So the one, the verse in Leviticus is probably one of the strongest one against homosexuality, but this is sandwiched between a verse about not having intercourse with a woman on her period lest you deserve to be stoned to get to death. Lovely. Keep that in mind, gentlemen. So a lot of Christians are easy to be like, okay, never mind, never mind. The complication comes in the New Testament after Jesus, Apostle Paul, and he's the one that is often used about like female submission and anti-LGBTQ doctrine, etc. Um, but if you pour over the history, the context, the translation, so many times evangelicals forget or don't realize the Bible was written in ancient Greek and Hebrew. You know, it's been through so many rounds and we don't really exactly know sexual immorality and these things that sound so clear mm -hmm. when someone in Christianity says, well, it's black and white, it's in the Bible, and you're like, yeah, sure, in the English translation it sounds pretty clear. Maybe it's gray. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well that's exactly yeah. why the channel is called God is Gray, because these are the issues that, you know, it's like you're trying to worship God on a Sunday and have a pure time, and then you hear something crazy, or you come home and read a, a, a savage passage in the Bible, and then all of a sudden your whole faith is shooketh, 
and I think it's worth diving in and figuring out why it strikes you so wrong. Mm -hmm. And if it strikes you wrong intuitively, something I would call the Holy Spirit, then you have to dive deeper. And that's what I've done for 15 years. I'm not a genius, I'm not a scholar, but I'm making some valid points and I definitely I will say, I like that you make the points that you make on your channel as yeah. a Christian because there are some people who, and I, granted I'm not trying to like completely discredit myself, I do think that, you know, I do some good here and there, I hope, <laughs> but there are some people who are so religious that they would not be willing to listen to me. Right. They might yeah, be yeah. willing to listen to you and you do talk a lot on things, social issues, that I find to be so important and honestly that's the reason why I do what I do. It's the social issues. Me too. I just happen to be an atheist. Yeah. You just happen to be a Christian but it's the same message but sometimes sending the same message from a different person can reach people completely differently. Yeah, and I love so that. It's mm -hmm. so cool that you do that. And I, I don't want this to be like a debate. I know we've talked on some things that people who are watching me are gonna be like, you guys should have had a debate. I'm not trying to do that because I don't, I don't want to have like a negative conversation. You live like 20 minutes from me. Like, we yeah, should, I'll, I'll be get, friends and hang out. Like, I'll get Jacqueline saved over, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'll turn her to the dark side. Don't worry. I have little devil horns right here. We can, we can, I can start my. See, I'm doing so well already. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I can put them back away. There are a lot of amazing resources, authors, theologians, people that are calling themselves this new wave of progressive Christianity. There's a movement on Twitter called the Exvangelical Movement and the Progressive Movement. So there are places you can find other voices like mine, and I always reference those as much as possible. But mm -hmm. YouTube had an empty space that I saw. It really did. And I slid in there. When I think of Christian YouTuber, I think of Girl Defined, Paul and Morgan. Yeah. You know, the transformed wife. There yeah. are some people who are too extreme in any direction. And it's just, if you never have someone that is that thing calling out your own problems, mm -hmm. it can be really difficult. Yeah. Which I find all of the time in politics. You know, like right. if you're a conservative and you never call out conservatives, or a liberal that never calls out liberals, then are you really questioning where you're coming from yourself? Because even though I lean more left, I have made my fair share of videos calling out the left and people call me a traitor and they get so angry with me. Yeah. You can never make anybody happy like that. So props to you for being a Christian who calls out Christians because yeah. I know how that can feel. No, like, it's a really, really good point. And that's why I have so much respect for Mr. Atheist and for yourself because you your communities deserve to be called out. When they're doing harm, which is my definition of sin, causing harm, you have to look at that. When I hear Paul and Morgan say, God is your birth control and you don't have to worry about it, you have to say something. And that's not because I'm hating on other Christians or someone is lying about um, female produ productive rights and, you know, just what's actually going on in the world, you can't stay silent. No, you can't. And in Christianity yeah. too, we talk about accountability all the time. And I'm sorry if I'm doing it publicly, but you're... No, 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 present sorry. Yeah, you're right. You sorry, I'm not sorry. It. She's not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you're gonna say something publicly that is an outright lie, that is misleading, that is gonna lead to more death, destruction, hurt, harm for people, then yes, I will be there ready to say something about it. So you touched on Paul and Morgan and they're saying that God is birth control and they've said a lot of interesting things and they're like the last channel kind of that I wanted to bring up. Yeah, okay. Because they're the one. last <laughs> they're the last one that we've both done a significant amount of commentary on. And I think you've had like personal beef with Morgan? Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love a good DM slide. Oh. You know, I try to do those slides as often as possible. That's how... No, I did a Twitter slide for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've tried to slide in with Morgan and Paul and uh, a lot of rejection and a lot of words shared that are not kind and we both really? definitely got like heated at certain points. Ooh. Because it's just like... I find a lot of the black and whiteness very offensive, like I said, and I get very defensive and up in arms when I see misinformation being spewed. I think that ignorance should not be synonymous with Christianity. I don't know why that has had to be like that. So when you say evolution isn't real, and you know, babies can be killed up to the moment after they're delivered on the table, I'm just like, no, can we talk about this? And my approach to Morgan was like, 
I actually think your stance is going to cause more abortions because that's genuinely how I feel and I'm sure she found that offensive but I'm like I have good reason let's just talk about it I can't yeah it's hard for me to imagine them being open to a conversation because I've tried I've said at the end of many of my like videos like hey if you guys are watching this, like, I would love <laughs> yeah. to you know yeah, nothing. no no and that's, I don't know. I'm just like, that speaks for itself. I'm no better than anyone, but I think a willingness to dive into your beliefs and a willingness to talk to someone that you think you'll have nothing in common with, example here, is like the most beautiful path towards growing and learning for both parties. Yeah, I yeah. wish that I wish that maybe, you know, one day in the future they might be more open to a conversation. If not with me, That'd at least I at would least, love it. At least with you. But no, I mean I think open conversation is great. Mm -hmm. And I do think it's really cool that you do what you do and I think it's great that we got together and are making a video and talking about all of these things that we really do have in common. Yeah. And I'm gonna leave here loving Jesus, even though I was in the presence of this very scary satanic atheist I know and she's yes, gonna I, I, leave the same as well I put, I put a few curses on you already I mean I hope that's okay you guys really should go check out her channel and subscribe the video that we did over there is really good really interesting embarrassing embarrassing things about our I guess my religious past and your more religious more extreme past yeah <laughs> it's interesting go watch it link in the description thanks so much for hanging out with me yeah. in this video so good to be here. Love uh, you guys. Bye! Bye.